This year, I earned 28 Platinum Trophies, with some being challenging and some not so much. I've got good games, I've got bad games, I've got hard games, I've got Gollum. But today, I'm going to be ranking all of them, not just on their gameplay, but also on how much fun I had completing them. Remember, this is all just my opinion, so please don't attack me, but I'd be curious to see your thoughts down below. And make sure to stick around at the end of the video, because I am going to be making an announcement for the future of the channel. Look at me increasing viewer attention. To start off, we've got my first platinum trophy ever with God of War Ragnarok. And I might be a little bit biased here, but this is genuinely one of my favorite games and platinum trophies of all time. We got an S tier. This is probably the most excited I've ever been to play a video game. I mean, I bought a PS5 just to do it. But the trophy list itself is really easy and it felt so natural to get that I didn't even realize how close I was to getting it until I beat the game. I looked at the trophy list, realized I only had like 10 left and decided to get my first platinum trophy. It also has some of the best side content I've ever seen in a video game. Every area feels so unique and actually fun to explore. So overall, a good trophy list, good gameplay, good story to match it. We got an instant S tier. But what I think is a solid B tier is God of War 2005, the OG God of War, where we saw Kratos run through a short, simple game with a simple trophy list that isn't bad, but it's just not very good either. Out of all the Greek God of War games, this was probably one of my favorites just because of how new this whole game genre was. I had never really played an old game like this. This game also has one of the most unique trophies for a Greek God of War game, which is to beat the game in under five hours. I didn't even come close to failing, but it was actually fun to tackle the game from a different perspective of just trying to do it fast, running past different enemies and staring at dummy thick Kratos. But for one of my more controversial takes, I'm gonna be putting The Last of Us at a C tier. I really just didn't like this game. <laughs> The gameplay itself, I just didn't find very interesting, and the trophy list did not match it at all. There were so many missables. It was also really painful for the collectibles how easily you could get locked off with an area. I remember there was a stairwell that I dropped down on accident, and then I just couldn't get back up, and later, I just spent like 20 minutes getting back to the area to find a comic book that I missed. And in terms of the gameplay, I can't really put my finger on why I don't like it. I don't think I was even necessarily bad at it. I just didn't find it very enjoyable. So although I know this game is really praised, in my personal opinion, I didn't like it. Please don't hurt me. Next up, we got God of War 2, which I think is another solid B tier, probably under the first God of War game. I feel like these could be interchangeable. They, like in five minutes, I might change my mind. I think while this game improved on the gameplay, the trophy list was pretty much the exact same aside from that one speedrun trophy, which I thought was actually fun. So I think that's why I'm just going to put it a little bit lower, but they're pretty interchangeable. Ghost of Tsushima, I feel like it's a solid A tier platinum trophy. Like Ragnarok, it felt very natural to get just as long as I got all the collectibles, completed all the Mongol bases. I had everything done besides a few miscellaneous trophies. The gameplay for this one is also so satisfying. That's why I enjoyed Ghost of Tsushima Legends so much because it's just it's so good. I feel like the only downside is just the amount of side missions. They can get really repetitive, and that's the only thing that holds this game back from an S tier. Jedi Fallen Order, I think it's another controversial pick for me. Most people would probably put this at like a mid to low B, but I'm going to be putting that at an A because this was one of my first games I ever played. No, it was not. What am I saying? Because this is one of the first big single player story games that I ever played. And it's one of my favorite games of all time. I owned it on my Xbox One, which you can see like right back. Is my mic blocking it? It is, hold up. On my Xbox One right there is where I originally played it. But as for the reason I think most people would rank it lower, the collectibles in this game are a pain in the ass. There was just one on Kashyyyk that I had to run around this area for like 15 to 20 minutes using different Reddit guides, YouTube tutorials, everything I could to find this last database thingy that just was not marked on the map. It was not marked on anything. I had no clue where it was going to be. But other than that one trophy, I think the rest of the trophies were actually pretty good. There were a few combat trophies, a few story trophies, a few collectibles. I think it all kind of merged together to be just a really solid platinum trophy. But another really solid platinum trophy that's going to be hopping up in the A tier as well is going to be Cuphead. This game is probably the only game on the list that I would actually consider hard. Most of these are just grinds 
ones that anyone could complete, but this game actually takes a bit of skill, and that's why I enjoyed it so much. The regular difficulty itself wasn't too bad, but the expert mode was brutal. I remember Wally Wahlberg or something like that just kept destroying me for so many hours in a row, and I just had to keep going back, but when I finally beat him, it was so satisfying, and that's just why I love this Platinum Trophy. When I finally beat it, I was actually proud of myself. Now, this next pick might be a controversial take because I don't really know what the people think about this game, but Astro's Playroom is going up at an S tier. The game was pretty short. The gameplay was satisfying. There were so many cool references. This is just a really solid Platinum Trophy. And if you own a PS5 and you don't have it, I would highly suggest that you pick it up. But for one of my most hyped games this year and probably one of my most disappointing, we've got Jedi Survivor. I think this one is a solid B tier. I then proceeded to violently rant about this game, which in retrospective, I don't know why, because I really enjoyed it and I thought it was really fun. I must have just woke up hating redheads. It's a decent game. I put it at B tier. We're moving on. Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, was just a solid game. There wasn't anything bad about it, but there wasn't anything good either. I think we're going to pop this in like a B tier. And the trophies weren't that challenging and were actually fun to grind through finding all the random little missables, except for that one kill with Drax. For whatever reason, Drax would not do a finisher on this guy. I spent so long trying to get Drax to do a finisher on this guy, and he wouldn't do it! Stray. What did I think of Stray? Rocket League is the game on this list with... Dude, fuck. Rocket League is the game with the most trophies on this list, and it would actually be one of the most enjoyable if the trophies actually functioned right. The big problem here is that it was bought by Epic Games, so the whole system of trading and collecting items was completely changed, which made getting these platinum a pain in the ass. There was also a whole debacle I had to do in order to trade with a random person for these two items you needed for trophies that used to be free, but if you didn't actually buy the game, you just claimed it free after Epic took over. These items weren't free anymore, and I had to buy some credits, but my credits were put on hold for three days, which I still think is the stupidest fucking feature in a video game ever. I digress. This Platinum could have been really good if it wasn't bought by Epic Games. We're going to pop this up to a solid... Probably under Jedi. Yeah, I think a solid B tier is where it fits. Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok's arch nemesis. You know where this is going. Instant Peppa Pig tier. Worst game. Ever. This game is actually really good. I don't know which is better, though. I didn't think this through. I feel like these are genuinely so interchangeable. I, I think I'm going to do this for now. One of my favorite gaming experiences for this entire year was when I first got into Elden Ring. Within the first like eight hours, I was battling it out against Margit and it was so much fun. I would go out, go get some more gear, hopefully level up, go back, fight Margit, get a little bit more in, but just not enough to beat her, then go out. Is Margit a dude? It was so much fun. And overall, this Platinum was actually natural. We just had to kill a bunch of bosses. And there was so much more that I didn't even experience by killing all the bosses. This game is genuinely a perfect game. I want to put it above God of War now. It Takes Two, my first actual co-op game with Dylan that was actually really fun. The trophy list was simple. There was a few missables. And even when we did miss a few, it took us like five minutes to go back through and get them. We're going to pop this one into a solid low A tier. I, I think that that's the best. And made by the same studio as it takes to a way out. This Platinum Trophy is ass. This game has no story achievements, and I actually got the Platinum Trophy before I even beat the game, but each one of these trophies were just... They were there. You had to go out of your way and click a button, and you got a trophy. Besides the dips challenge, that might be the hardest trophy on this list. God of War 3 is the best Greek God of War game by far, and it's not even close. We're going to pop this one at probably here, yeah, between Cuphead and Fallen Order. The hype that I had for this game, the graphics that were actually good, the gameplay that was improved upon, the murdering of the Greek gods. This trophy list was also pretty much the exact same as the other God of Wars. Overall, solid game, solid platinum trophy, middle of the A tier. Now, if you have eyeballs, you probably know where Peppa Pig is gonna be ranked. 
We're putting it in the Peppin Pig tier. It has its own tier because this is such a short game. It took me 42 minutes. It's my fastest achieved platinum. And I think this was genuinely just funny that I did this. But you know what's not funny? Peppa Pig 2. Out of all the games on this list, this is the only platinum trophy that I regret getting because it's just so lame that I did the same joke twice. This is, this is going to Peppa. Honestly, this is getting its own tier. Peppa Pig 2. It genuinely surprised me, and I'm gonna put this... Honestly, it might be above the B tier. Although the story of the game was trash, although the gameplay was the same again, I just really enjoyed this one, and especially the trophy list was fun. There were a few missable trophies in this game that actually took some skill and effort and planning for me to complete, like the one in the funnel, the one on the slide, with honestly one of my favorite bits of the entire year. Now, my next trophy here is to complete this entire slide without dying, but if I do die, then I have to restart the chapter and replay through that five minute long battle. So we've got some actual stuff here. Okay. I think I'm ready. This is going to be pretty scary, though. What? I just hit the fattest lag spike I have ever seen. However, Chains of Olympus was not good. This one's going at a solid C tier. Yeah, this game just sucks. There's nothing to say. Although it did have the pushing away daughter quick time event. That was a a really good one. I bought a PS3 to play this game, and while I don't regret doing that, it probably wasn't worth it. Now, for another platinum trophy that I thought would be funny to get, but just ended up being lame and kind of sad with Scrat's Nutty Adventure, we're gonna put this one at the end of C tier. It doesn't do anything wrong. The game is exactly what it is. I knew what I was getting into. I just thought it would be funnier. Really nothing interesting happened here. This one sucks. Don't get it. Don't go for this platinum trophy. Now, the theme of disappointing platinum trophies, Ghost of Sparta is probably my most disappointing game on this list. For whatever reason, I hyped it up in my head that, oh, this is gonna be so cool. We're gonna go find Kratos' brother. And then we had five minutes with Kratos' brother, five minutes with Kratos' mother at the start, and the rest was just walking. It was walking simulator. And in terms of trophies, it was just standard God of War. Overall, I think this is a C tier, but it's gonna be under change of Olympus just because this one I knew was going to be bad and this one I thought was going to be good and I was just disappointed. Now we were here Expeditions The Friendship was a game released this year that Dylan told me about and I decided to play with him because I thought it would be fun and it was. This was genuinely one of the most fun platinums I had. It was so short and simple the game only consisted of 30 puzzles but they were actually fun. Me and Dylan had to work together and we definitely didn't want to kill each other at <laughs> Overall, I think this one's just a solid A tier. I think if I played this back in 2018, I would put Spider-Man PS4 at like a high, high A. But because I played the other two Spider-Man games, this one's gonna go a little bit lower because I know the potential of what this game could have been. The gameplay itself was really fun. The story itself was really fun. And most of the trophies were really fun. But completing all the crimes and completing all the research stations and all this random bloated shit really just ruined this experience for me. We're gonna skip God of War 2018 for now just to move on to Miles Morales because I think this is one of the best platinum trophies i have aside from new game plus this platinum trophy is perfect each little collectible and side quest actually felt well thought out they had engaging stories and there were so few crimes that you had to do so few side quests that they actually made it better quality over quantity but spider-man 2 oh -ho -ho, was better in every way still probably above cuphead just under goes of sushi but this game is so good it's almost too good in fact that it kind of makes me mad at how short the game was i wish the game was longer all we had to do was find the different collectibles which were really easy to find this game was just so good but I wish there was more of it. Now for God of War 2018, you already know where it's going. This is an S tier by far, but where does it go? Well, I think that God of War 2018 is the better overall game. I am very biased because of my hype for Ragnarok, but the Valkyries in this game are one of the most fun boss fights on this list. They were definitely better than the Berserkers in every way. I remember the satisfaction when I fucking 
brutally murdered ear. What the hell was that? But all the other trophies on this list really just complemented the game. And once again, every side quest felt so purposeful. There were so few of them, but they all were just fun to complete. Now, Ratchet & Clank was a game that just really stood out to me for some reason. And I just decided to do it off of a whim. And it wasn't bad. Yeah, it was pretty bad. The story just was not very engaging to me. The collectibles were a pain in the ass and very stressful for some reason. And also I was sick during this recording and video, so that did not help my opinion on the process. But off the top of my head, I can't really even think of what the trophies I had to do to get this platinum were which is not a good thing at all. So we're gonna put this at like a solid C tier. But that was actually the last platinum trophy that I earned for this year. The rest of my year was dedicated to DLCs. I did four DLC videos in a row, two of which were just so similar to the actual games that I'm not gonna rank them differently. But Legends was so different than actual Ghost of Tsushima that I gotta rank it. The best part of Ghost of Tsushima by far is the combat and the Legends DLC perfectly suited that uh, just giving me more combat. If it wasn't for the length, this will be higher, but I think this one is like a solid B tier. And for the DLC, that is probably the best DLC I've ever seen. God of War Valhalla, it's God of War instant as going back to old Greece was so much fun and the trophies were really fun. All you had to do was just beat the main story, go back through, kill a final little extra boss. And that was just genuinely the perfect little trophy list to add on to God of War Ragnarok. And then there's the game I didn't finish platinum in this year. This game is so bad, it's getting its own tier. Honestly, I think it needs another row. We're putting another, it needs two rows below. The game itself is just trash. The miserable trophies were so annoying. The collectibles were so annoying to follow the guide on because every area in this game looks the exact same. I couldn't like figure out where the guide was compared to me. That is not a problem I've had before. And it's not even mentioning the fact that two of the trophies for this game just didn't pop, even though they should have. I have no explanation. The trophies just didn't pop. So this right here is my final ranking for every platinum trophy that I earned this year. A few here are interchangeable, like Elden Ring and the God of Wars. But if you've made it this far, first of all, I want to congratulate you for listening to me. Yeah. And second of all, I'll reward you with my little announcement of my plan going forward for the content of 2024. This year, if you didn't notice, I uploaded a video every single week on Sunday at 3 p.m. CST, except for two times. Except for three times, one of which was Stray, which I accidentally posted at 3 a.m. instead of 3 p.m. because I went on vacation and I scheduled it for the wrong time. And the other two were the final two videos of the year, both because I just completely paced myself poorly. But for the next year, I'm not gonna be uploading weekly. I feel like a lot of my videos have been held back by me trying to rush them out. So we're canceling weekly uploads, but there's a catch. To make up for the lack of content, I'm gonna continue trying to post at least one short every day for the entire year. I know that's a hefty goal, but I'm gonna try. And also I'm gonna be streaming i know you saw that camera up there for the whole video you were wondering what is that i know you saw it <laughs> for now the streams are going to be over here on this channel on youtube it was a bit of a hard decision to choose between youtube and twitch and then Twitch became the new Pornhub. And the streams are not going to be consistent at all. I have an actual job and my work schedule is entirely unpredictable. I could be working one day a week or I could be working every single day. So it's basically going to be based off of that. All I do know is that my first stream is going to be tomorrow at 12 p.m. CST. We're going to be streaming Bloodborne live. Starting my Bloodborne journey going for the Platinum Trophy. If you have a chance to stop on by, come say hi. I'll say hello. Here's to another good year trophy hunting. I'll see you guys there.